President Eisenhower arrives in London, the second stop on his momentous tour of the Western Allies capital. Earlier in Bonn, he received a triumphal ovation and obtained Adenauer's backing for the coming talks with Khrushchev. Now at London Airport, Ike is greeted by Prime Minister Macmillan, with whom he'll spend long hours in off-the-record talks during his visit. The ceremonial aspect of the visit of a chief of state is not neglected, but more than mere courtesy is represented here. It's only the third trip to England of an American president while in office, but Ike returns to a land that knew him as the supreme allied commander in World War II, and as the first military commander of NATO forces, and England greets him with a warmth even exceeding the acclaim elsewhere. Next day, Queen Elizabeth and the royal family are the president's hosts at Balmoral Castle in the Scottish Highlands. Ike's crowded schedule prevented him from visiting Culzian Castle, which was given him as thanks for his war service. But for one day at Balmoral, spent quietly with the royal family, there is relaxation from the pressures of his almost unprecedented venture in statesmanship. Ahead lie more talks with Prime Minister Macmillan and sessions with de Gaulle in Paris. But Ike shows not a trace of care or fatigue as he reviews the Royal Guard, the Highland Fusiliers. It's the new Eisenhower, whose vigorous manner and appearance impressed Europe, perhaps as much as did the historic nature of his mission. In the hope of achieving some real relaxation of Cold War tensions, Ike is staking his personal prestige and authority to bolster harmony amongst the Western Allies dispel fears that he might ignore European interests during his talks with Khrushchev, and then to explore in those talks every possibility for a peaceful settlement between the Soviet and the West, these are the formidable goals. One result, the man whom the royal children seem to regard almost as a favorite uncle here on the lawn at Balmoral is viewed today by many in the world as a living symbol of peace, freedom, and hope. <laughs>